Hey everyone, Pastor John with uh, another Dive Deeper during Holy Week. And you might be wondering, you know, wait a minute, today's Saturday. We just celebrated Christ's crucifixion at our Good Friday service last night. Um, he's dead. He's in the grave. How can we have a video today? How can we talk about what Jesus did on Saturday? Isn't it just as simple as he was in the grave? And I, and I think the Bible would tell us differently. I think as we look at this, there are some very exciting things that Jesus did on this day. And we find out uh, about those things in Hebrews chapter 9. Um, we're going to see in verse, uh, starting in verse 11, it says, But when Christ appeared as high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. So what we see right there is that on this day after his crucifixion, Jesus enters into the holy place. But he doesn't enter the one, enter the one that was made by human hands. He doesn't enter the temple that is on earth. No, he enters into the very throne room of God because Jesus is our high priest. He is the one that went to God's presence to intervene on our behalf and with the sacrifice for sin. And he didn't enter with the blood of a goat. He didn't enter with the blood of, of a lamb. He entered with the blood of the lamb, his own blood. And it goes on um, back in Hebrews 19. It says, For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? This tells us that, you know, when a high priest in the Old Testament or those that would, uh, you know, perform those sacrifices, they would enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of a sacrificed animal. Uh, that would only purify the flesh, but because Jesus was without blemish, he never sinned, he lived a perfect life, and he offered himself as a sacrifice for us, that his sacrifice is not only powerful enough to cleanse our flesh, but to cleanse our spirit, to truly remove the stain and the power of sin from our life because he entered into that into that throne room on the power of his perfect sacrifice because he died for us we can be free our sins are washed away by the power of his perfect pure blood and he did all of this after his crucifixion he enters into that throne room uh, on our behalf the Bible tells us that he's still there advocating for us and, and interceding for us and what a powerful testimony that is. We see some additional uh, color about what Jesus did later in Hebrews 9, starting in verse 24. It says, For Christ entered not only uh, into the holy places made with hands, which are copies of true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment. So Christ, having offered once uh, to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time and not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting him. Now, this is an exciting passage that tells us again about the power of Jesus's sacrifice that he offered himself once for all. You know, the, whole, the, the high priest in the Old Testament would have to enter into the Holy of Holies every year. There had to be a sacrifice every year to cover the sins of the people. But that didn't, that wasn't needed with Jesus because his blood was perfect. He was so powerful, is so powerful that his sacrifice is enough one time and for all people. What an awesome promise that we have. And we see that, you know, in this passage, there's a promise that as we uh, receive that gift of salvation, as we allow his blood to wash away our sin and him to come into our life and bring change, there's a promise of Jesus's return that when he comes back, who is he coming back for? Those who eagerly await him. I don't know about you, but I am eagerly awaiting God, I'm eagerly awaiting Jesus's return so that I can spend eternity with him in heaven. And I hope that you're waiting for the same thing. There's one other thing that I, I just love about 
uh, this detail that Jesus is our high priest. And it actually goes back all the way to the book of Exodus, where it outlines what the high priest was to wear as he entered into the Holy of Holies. And I think it's an important thing for us to read and understand, because this tells us in Hebrews 9 that Jesus is our high priest and that he went into the Holy of Holies, not the one in the, in the temple, but the one that is the throne room of God, the very true Holy of Holies in the presence of the Lord in heaven. Well, let's go back to what it says in Exodus to learn a little bit more about what Jesus did for us. And we find it in Exodus chapter 28. And it's Moses, um, you know, declaring for Aaron what he has to wear as the first high priest. It says, you shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on one stone and, and the names of the remaining six on the other stone in the order of their birth. As a jeweler engraves signets, so shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. You shall enclose them in settings of gold filigree, and you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod, stones as stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear the names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. What we see here, and it actually goes on and says that they did the same thing on the, on the breast piece. What it tells us is that as Aaron, as the high priest, and every high priest after Aaron did, is as they entered into the Holy of Holies, they wore an ephod. And on this ephod, on the shoulders and on the best breast piece, over the heart, were the names of the tribes of Israel. It says that as Aaron entered into that place, as he entered into the Holy of Holies, he was literally carrying the nation of Israel on his shoulders and over his heart. That tells me that because Jesus is my high priest, because he's your high priest, that he carried us on his shoulders, that he carried us over his heart as he entered into God's throne room, into his presence to offer himself as a sacrifice for us. You can tell that I'm excited because there's power in Jesus's blood. And man, it is so amazing to think that I was on his shoulders, that he was carrying me over his shoulders, that, it, that I was a burden to him, that he went uh, to God to carry me there but also that he loved me so much that he carried me in his heart, that he would offer himself in such a way that because of his perfect sacrifice, my sins could be washed away, your sins could be washed away. And we all have that gift of eternal life that we can walk in today and we can eagerly await his return. I pray that you're eagerly awaiting his return. If you're not, I, I really challenge you to look at your life and find those things. What are the things that are holding you back? Where is that sin getting in the way? Don't hold on to it anymore. Let his powerful blood wash it away. He died once for all. There's nothing that you have to do to earn the gift of his salvation. Surrender yourself to him. Walk in, in the change and transformation that only comes through the power of his sacrifice. God bless you as you dive deeper into his word today and every day.